Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 5. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at bringing in a character, we're going to do a little bit of variation on the character and we're also going to take a look at animations. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload with this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. Characters. The character we're going to use is going to be kind of relative to Resident Evil, so it's obviously going to be guns involved and whatever else, but you don't necessarily have to use the same character that I am going to use. So, how are we going to get a character into our game as it stands? Great thing we can use is called the Asset Store. Now, if you hold Control on your keyboard and press the number 9, you will end up on the Asset Store. Just loading here, and currently it looks a little bit like this, or something similar to that effect. Now, if you don't like how this looks, you can actually switch to the old version of the Asset Store, and I personally do prefer the old Asset Store. It's still got all the exact same content, it just looks a little different. And you can click it up here. If indeed you do want to shop on the old Asset Store, it will look like this. If you want to go to the new Asset Store again, you can just click this icon right here. No problem. So what is the Asset Store? Simply put, the Asset Store is a way of you being able to obtain assets for you to use in your game. Now, whether it's free, or whether it's paid, you can use these assets in a commercial game. The license for it just simply involves you downloading it and then it's yours to use in your game. For example, we're going to download a character from the Asset Store. That character is then ours to do what we want with, play with, create in the game, and then we can even publish the game ourselves. So, how do we use the Asset Store? Simple, it's just like a Google search. Head to the search bar and type in what you would want. You could theoretically just type in character, hit return, and you'll be presented with all different assets. Obviously some are paid, some are free. Uh, I, I guess it's up to you whether you're willing to pay, but everything we do on this channel is done for free. So we will only be looking for free assets. Another way of looking around is going to the 3D model section up here and then clicking any of the sub selections below. So characters. So then you could click on free only and it present you with characters that are free. And as you can see, there are quite a few. So there's one specific character I would like to use because I've used um, assets from the creator before. Um, cards on table here. I am not in touch with the uh, creator of this. This is something I like. Uh, I've not been paid for any of this. I've chosen whatever we're going to use because I like them. So I'm going to go with a soldier. So let's get rid of everything up here. We can just click the little X and I'm going to type in polite soldier and that will take us directly to the asset we're going to use. So if you click the asset, it's going to be this guy. Now the great thing about this is we can customize it a little bit more. We can do a little variation on him. You may not like how he looks and it's entirely up to you, but it comes with some good assets that we can use and animations and everything. So all you would need to do is just click on import or download. And when it does that, you'd be presented with another box where you just click import and it brings it into your scene. I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. So I'm going to head back to my scene view here at the top and it is in this folder and then characters. And then here he is, soldier. So you've got the text version and untexted version. So I'm going to drag and drop this character into our scene right here. So drag and drop. He looks kind of small, so let's play around with that character and see what we can do with him. Let's go to our transform component up here and let's increase the scale to, let's say, 6 by 6 by 6. And he looks a little bit larger now, more in comparison to the world around him. Let's turn him around so he faces this way. So let's put the rotation on the Y as 180. Perfect. So he doesn't quite seem to fit in with how the game looks. That's due to the material, how it's set up. You can keep him as it is, but while we're here, why don't we just do a little bit of refinement on him? See what we get. So to refine this, you could, if you wanted to, like I say, leave him, but if you open this up, and go on soldier, you'll see here you have right there the material. This material is what defines how this soldier looks and it's all done via a shader. Now the shader is a way of 
think think of it as creating effects on uh, materials in the game for example all of what we've done so far is a standard shader and you can actually do a lot with the standard shader so let's try this out let's change the shader here back to standard and you'll see him change almost instantly now he looks a little bit more in line with how the game looks and remember when we created normal maps for all of our objects, the floor and the walls? Well, let's do the same with this guy. So if we click on the albedo image here, it will take us to this. This right here is what is textured on our soldier. So let's take a copy of this, hold control, press D. And let's rename this one to soldier underscore N. N again is short for normal map. And texture type, let's change it to normal map and click on apply. Let's not tick the grayscale option and let's see how our soldier looks when we apply the normal map to his material. So let's go on to our soldier. Uh, sorry, in the actual folder, it would help, wouldn't it? So click on our soldier right here and then let's attach that normal map that we just created in the textures folder over here. So you can see how much he's changed already. We can play around with the normal map, change it if you wanted to. Let's keep it as one for now. And then let's try the grayscale. Click on apply. And I can see this isn't quite what we would expect our character look, to look like at this point. It's too bumpy. That is where we can change this bumpiness. So if we reduce it down quite a lot and click apply, you'll notice a little bit of a difference. We can also change it on the actual material itself if we wanted to. But again, it's something that you could work around and play with. So I'm gonna have this as 1.1. Uh, let's change the source to an albedo alpha to darken him a little bit, and then increase the metallic quite a lot. Now that can be used as a cool effect later on. And to be fair, we are gonna use this effect later on when we deal with, I don't know, it's like a fire enemy or something. So that's gonna be kind of cool. Uh, so let's bring our smoothness down and also our metallic down. Bring up just a little bit so we can play around with these settings here and customize how our guy actually looks. And once again, you don't necessarily have to do the same, but at least he looks a little bit more in keeping with the rest of the game. When we deal a little bit more with something called post-processing, he will look even better. So now we have our character in, we actually have character can you believe it already he's going to be our main character he's going to be the one who builds a story up he ends up shooting the zombies let's have a look what it looks like in the game do we need to increase his size even more we want to keep the world relative around him i'm going to say yes let's increase his size just a little bit more so instead of six by six by six let's have it seven by seven by seven so is that around about the right height now Let's press play and check him out. Perfect. So it's up to you whether you want to have him that high or not. It's, it is your game that we are developing after all. Now, what we're going to get into now is some animations. Animations are absolutely vital when it comes to any kind of game development. And you may have noticed just then, if we press play, he does move ever so slightly. He has an idle animation already attached to him. See his head move just there? So, in order to get all this right, what we're going to do is kind of reset everything with our character. So, if we go to the animations folder that we already have within our actual uh, model itself, what we need to do is play around with these animations and get them how we would like. There is also a legacy folder. The difference here is the main animation folder, they use the animator component, which is up here and if you don't have that animator component you can add it um, you can either add the animation which is down here which we'll deal with in a bit however the animator you can actually get if you double click on an animation and bring it in but I'll show you that in a second so firstly let's actually bring in the animation to uh, the game the actual object itself like I said we're going to reset everything so Select your soldier and everything in the inspector panel, start from the bottom, right click and remove component. 
right click, remove component, right click, remove component. Like I say, the reason we do this is because we want to customize it more so than what it already is by default. So like I said, we can have that idle animation. So if we go to this one right here in animation still, go to idle, click the little play button next to it, you'll notice this file here. This is the animation. If we hold control and press D to duplicate it, it will extract it out of that prefab. And now we have this as an individual animation. What we can do then is drag that individual animation onto our soldier up here, like so. And it will create this controller right here. If you double click this controller that it's created, it will take you to the animator component. And you can see here how this works. This is a way of storing animations within a controller itself. And later on, it gives us the option to be able to control these animations quickly and easily. So if we go back to our scene view and press play now, you should be able to see that our character still has that idle animation. We've reattached the idle animation in order for him to do that. So why don't we attach another animation? Let's attach the walk animation. That's going to be what we deal with next tutorial. So we may as well deal with it. So button next to it, select the animation, hold control and press D to duplicate. And now drag and drop that animation onto the soldier. Click the animator component at the top and you'll notice walk is highlighted gray. If it's highlighted uh, orange, and it said yellow then, if it's highlighted orange, it means that that is the default animation. That is the first animation it will play unless otherwise stated via a C-sharp script. So in this case, the entry point is when the game starts. That means the first animation to play, and in this case loop, is going to be idle. To change that, we can go to walk, right click, and then set as layer default state. That means that the walk animation will now be the default animation. So if we go back to scene, press play, it will take us straight there. Now you can see our guy is now walking. Obviously the camera's changed, but if we click on scene view, you can see he's walking. And he is walking on the spot, which is exactly what we want because we're going to control his actual movement speed ourselves via a C-sharp script. Uh, obviously we're going to use a lot more than just idle and walk. There's going to be a lot more that we'll need to add to it. So what I would recommend before we come to the next tutorial is take a look at what animations you find relative here, what, the ones that are important. Uh, for now, just walking and idle are going to be the two that we'll use, but it's always nice to have a look and play around with the animations themselves. Now there is more we can do with animation and we may as well just have a quick experiment. So if we go back to our soldiers animator and click on walk again, we can change the speed here. So if we were to press play, head to the game view, we can change the speed to zero and it will freeze him. Let me click scene view again so we can see. And then we can gradually increase the speed. Let's put it as 0.2. So now it's in slow motion. If we set it as three, there you go. So it's quite nice and a kind of cool effect that you can play around with to create these sort of um, animations. And they can be used for different things. Like if you're doing a scene where everything goes slow motion, you could set everything much slower and play that animation like that. So the standard default one speed is playing everything real time. And that's what we're going to do most of all in the next tutorial. So next tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a C-sharp script for tank controls. That's right. We're gonna create a script to allow us to move our character around in the scene. And we're quite looking forward to that one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So guys, until the next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.